Hello, everyone. Uh, in, uh, in our group, MSIP, we uh, arranged a way for the first time uh, for Club out, uh, for study extended Club out 3 imaging for two-way waves. Uh, so in order to under, understand the benefits and added value of the new migration method, let's first take a look at the uh, study extended Club out 3 imaging uh, for one-way wave. Uh, and we make a, a and we made a few uh, comparisons. So in this presentation, I will show you the comparison for the interpretability of the amplitude, amplitude between Kirchhoff migration, Club out 2 imaging condition, and uh, uh, Club out 3, and especially for Club out 2 and Club out 3. Uh, so in this, in this co uh, comparison, uh, we predict an uh, angle dependent reflection coefficient from storm migration and uh, Kirchhoff migration. And here it shows the uh, 2D storm migration. Uh, the storm uh, migration, that is Club 3 imaging condition, that predict, uh, it predict a source and a receiver experiment at depths and then ask time equals zero. And we can see from this uh, storm migration formula that the integral of e to the minus i k s z z brings the source down, and the integral of e to the i k g z z brings the receiver down, and the integral of d omega is where the time equals zero comes in. And the Kirchhoff migration uh, is a, uh, a stationary phase approximation of stored migration, uh, and here we can make. Uh, we can make a stationary phase approximation of uh, this two integral shown here. And uh, here it shows the, uh, after we make an asymptotic approximation, we, uh, we can get the Kirchhoff migration here shown uh, in the last equation here. And here we can see uh, the, the formula tells us uh, it, it predicts a candidate, t equals r of the over c, it predicts a candidates on a, tra a travel on a <coughs> ellipse. And uh, because it's an asymptotic approximation of storm migration, it loses an ability to predict the source and receiver experiment at depths. And there are analysis and numerical tests for differences of storm migration and Kirchhoff migration due to the stationary phase approximation in Chao Ma, Jing Wu, 2014, and uh, Chang Fu AL. Uh, so next, uh, let's, let's see how can we predict the angle dependent reflection coefficient from stored migration. And the first formula is the uh, uh, original stored migration. And the second formula, which is equivalent to the first uh, equation, uh, we change the variables, the integral variables, which is the stored contribution. And it makes the second equation uh, with, uh, much faster than the first uh, original stored migration. And now we have a stored migration in KX, KZ domain. And uh, it's Clairvaux 3 imaging condition. And the image can provide an uh, angle average reflection coefficient. And then uh, the next uh, second equation uh, is an integral in the first equation, which has a variable uh, KH, which is a Fourier conjugate of uh, subsurface offset. And this is a study extended Club 3 image. And it, provide, uh, it can provide an angle dependent reflection coefficient. So uh, for analyze, analyzing of a uh, for one reflector, the Yonjelesky Press provides an analytical relationship between the data and the plane wave reflection coefficient shown here. Uh, and we can uh, put this data into the stored extended Kalabau 3 migration and solve for the reflection, plane wave reflection coefficient. Here uh, shows an uh, equation that can predict the reflection coefficient. Here, the R of KSX, KSZ is the plane wave reflection coefficient. And the KSX and the KSZ is the horizontal and the vertical wave number of a plane wave. And uh, this two wave number determines the angle of the plane wave. So that determines 
an angle of this reflection coefficient r. Uh, so next, uh, for Kirchhoff migration, we are, so we are using the same formula here uh, as we use for stored migration and uh, substitute the Kirchhoff migration instead of the stored extended clubhouse rate and try to determine what the Kirchhoff migration uh, would produce, would, would predict. So uh, next I'll show the numerical test for uh, this comparison. And here shows the model, it's one reflector model. And we gave the algorithm exactly data, the, algorithm, the algorithms required. Uh, that is for stored migration, we're using the data generated by the reflectivity method. And for Kirchhoff migration, we're using the kanyad hu method. And here shows the uh, result. Here on the left uh, figure shows the real plane wave reflection coefficient. Here, the kx and kz is the horizontal and the vertical wave number of the plane wave. And the different uh, color uh, represents different uh, uh, amplitude of the reflection coefficient. And the second, uh, second figure shows the stored extended uh, clubhouse ray provided uh, angle dependent reflection coefficient. And the w we can say it's quite close to the real plane wave reflection coefficient, uh, uh, except for some uh, small numerical errors. Uh, and the, the third picture shown on the right is the uh, we in, we, it's the same formula. We substitute the Kirchhoff migration instead of the stored migration into the to predict the uh, reflection coefficient, and we can say it's not give us nothing, but it's not as good as the uh, stored ex extended clubhouse rate. And then I'll show you another comparison, and this comparison comes from understanding the clubhouse two RTM uh, into providing a, a evolved into providing geometric optics reflection coefficient. And for clubhouse two, the original uh, original clubhouse two is to bring us uh, data back and source forward uh, in with in depth for one way wave, and then in 1983. Uh, they, it changed to uh, bring the data back and source forward in time. And then in addition, Yu Zhang AL introduced the geometric optics reflection coefficient modeling uh, relating the reflection data and the incident uh, source wave field. And that is their amplitude uh, information goal. And for stored, for stored extended clubhouse rate, it can provide a plane wave reflection coefficient. The plane wave reflection coefficient is the definition of reflection coefficient. And the geometric optics reflection coefficient is approximate to that. So we are using the same geometric optics uh, picture uh, to uh, uh, get a reflection coefficient from Kirchhoff migration. And here, this picture uh, shows a geometry optics picture. We are giving a source A and the B and the imaging point C, we can determine a incident and the deep angle. And the, uh, here gamma is the incident angle, alpha is the deep angle. And what is, uh, and the case is the tangent of the incident angle, eta is the tangent of the uh, deep angle. So what is going on here is, uh, that is in a geometry optics picture, we can arrange the Kirchhoff migration to give us a, a image uh, with with a uh, with a variable uh, of the incident angle, and then we can get a geometric optics uh, reflection coefficient from Kirchhoff migration. And here it shows the numerical test. It's, it's the same uh, one reflector model, and we're using the uh, exact data the algorithm requires. And here it shows the uh, result that the green line is the real plane wave reflection coefficient. And the blue line, which is very close to the uh, green line, is the stored migration provided, uh, is the stored migration provided plane wave reflection coefficient. 
and the red line is the uh, geometric optics uh, approximate reflection coefficient provided by Kirchhoff migration. And this is uh, similar to the reflection coefficient um, uh, of Clairbaut 2. And next, we will show you a comparison for the geometric optics reflection coefficient and the plane wave reflection coefficient. And the geometric optics reflection coefficient is the amplitude information goal for Clairbaut 2 RTM. And the plane wave reflection coefficient can be provided by study extended Clairbaut 3. So this comparison is actually compared uh, the amplitude information goal of Clairbaut 2 and uh, what the Clairbaut, study extended Clairbaut 3 can provide. And here shows the uh, uh, one reflector model. Uh, and here shows the uh, plane wave reflection coefficient, which represents the study extended Clairbaut 3, which is shown in blue uh, in the picture. And the red line is the geometric optics approximate reflection coefficient, which represents the uh, high watermark Clairbaut 2 RTM. And we can see they have similar trend but the uh, uh, value are quite different. And for amplitude analysis, that is always plane wave reflection coefficient, which is, uh, it can be provided by study extended Clairbaut 3. Uh, using the geometry optics reflection coefficient provided by extended Clairbaut 2 will cause error. And next I will show you a comparison for the uh, frequency fidelity between Clairbaut 2 and uh, Clairbaut 3. So how do you know uh, if a migration method has made a high frequency approximation? And one indication is uh, if, it, if the method predicts a travel time curve of candidate image. So that's an indication that it, this method is a high frequency approximation. Uh, so here it shows uh, uh, one receiver, one, one source, one receiver image of Clairbaut, of Kirchhoff migration and Clairbaut 2 RTM. And we can say they share some behavior. They both predict candidates on an ellipse. And depending on summing over sources uh, to remove uh, uh, certain artifacts. And here it shows, the left figure shows the one source and one receiver image of Clairbaut 3 source migration. And we can say that this, in, this result indicate that Clairbaut 2 RTM is a high frequency approximation where on the Clairbaut 3 slowly extended, slowly extended Clairbaut 3 is not a high frequency approximation. So in this presentation, uh, I take you through uh, two comparisons. The first is the interpreted, we compare so, uh, Kirchhoff migration, uh, Clairbaut 2 and Clairbaut 3 imaging condition, especially Clairbaut 2 and Clairbaut 3, for the interpre interpretability of the amplitude. And we say, we say that the Clairbaut 3 stored extended, stored extended Clairbaut 3 uh, migration can provide a plane wave reflection coefficient, while the uh, Clairbaut 2 can only provide a geometric optics reflection coefficient which is an approximate uh, to uh, uh, real reflection coefficient. And we also uh, take a comparison for the frequency fidelity between Clairbaut 2 and Clairbaut 3. And the results indicate that um, the Clairbaut 2 RTM is a high frequency approximation. Uh, thank you.